bulk data collection is back. Hewlett and Packard get a divorce. And learn how not to get charged for Apple Music after your free trial. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 371 for Wednesday, July 1st, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash technight. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney, and joining me today is Devendra Hardawar, Senior Editor at Engadget. Devendra covers tech news as well as tech culture, movies, other entertainment. Today we're going to talk to him about all of it. Welcome, Devendra. Thank you. Always good to be here. Well, let's start with your story about NSA surveillance. Uh, mm -hmm. You reported that the National Security Agency can now resume bulk and systematic collection of Americans' domestic phone calls. And this is a reversal of a court decision in May that said this kind of bulk data collection is illegal. Uh, what does all of this mean? It's, it's getting really confusing. So basically what this means is that uh, the NSA and other agencies can start collecting data using the old uh, bulk data collection method uh, for the next 180 days. Uh, and that's a grace period set out uh, with the Freedom Act, which was just signed, I think, in early June. Um, which And the whole point of that is to pretty much put the end to bulk data collection and it'll make agencies have to get court orders for any information they want to get from telecoms. Uh, but until that takes effect fully uh, for the next six months, uh, they'll still be able to do the normal bulk data collection that they've been doing so far. So so between, so between in May, we heard that they couldn't collect data anymore. Yeah. Then the Freedom Act, which sounds a lot better than it really is, <laughs> says it's going to... It's better to, than bulk data collection. Yeah. It, it's better, but uh, but now they're quietly, they quietly started it already. They, they started back the yeah. collection already. Well, we we don't quite, the, the, the whole thing with all of this is we don't quite know what's happening. Um, we did hear right after uh, President Obama signed the Freedom Act that the White House was also working to get bulk data collection restarted for this period. And it sounds like that's kind of what's happening now. Uh, but yeah, we don't know exactly what the agencies are doing, only that it's now deemed uh, legal for them to do it for the next six months. So just as a kind of refresher course, I mean, this has been going on since 2001, since the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't know anything about it at all until the Snowden leaks, correct? Yeah, That's, yeah. And so now that we all know they have to sort of say, well, we're going to reform it, but we can still do it. It's very, yeah, we're in a really confusing point right now. Um, I, the Freedom Act is not certainly not a perfect thing, but by adding more rules and making uh, basically making the agencies go through more hoops to get uh, people's data, um, it's certainly going to be better than bulk data collection. So the only problem is that there is this grace period, and until that expires, I guess we're going to we're going to see bulk data, data collection like we have before. And the ACLU is also involved. What are they doing? Um, well, what we know before is that the ACLU uh, they try to get this whole thing appealed. So I'm just trying to look it up here. Uh, the ACLU. The, the whole decision before from the Second Circuit Court, and that was like back in May, that was kind of all inspired by an ACLU uh, appeal to that thing. And um, I guess what we're seeing now is that there's another group, not just the ACLU, there's another um, nonprofit group that's trying to fight against this, that's trying to get this decision appealed. This is from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which is another court, uh, and they say uh, they can basically overrule the Second Circuit Court. All right, so we've eaten all our vegetables. Now it's yeah. time for dessert. Let's talk about the trailer for the new Steve Jobs movie. Uh, it's directed by Danny Boyle, who directed Slumdog Millionaire and The Beach. Uh, the script is written by Aaron Sorkin, who's already proven he can make the world care about a socially inept geek who has the power to change the world. Did that for us in Social Network. Uh, now you have very high expectations for this movie. I have, I've been following this project for a while and I should tell people too, don't get confused. This isn't the this is a very different movie than the Ashton Kutcher Steve Jobs movie, which was just called Jobs and was more of like an indie thing. This is a big, you know, big budget movie. Um, and I'm excited. I'm a big Aaron Sorkin fan. Uh, the Social Network is not a perfect movie. It's definitely not accurate. But I like the way they portrayed the founding of Facebook and, you know, making a pretty young company, you know, getting almost like Shakespearean drama out of that. I find that really compelling. And Steve Jobs' life is certainly... Um, 
dramatic enough that I think he has a lot to work with. Uh, Michael Fassbender wasn't, wasn't my first choice as Steve Jobs, but I love him as an actor. He can pretty much do anything. So I'm excited to see what he does with this. Do you have a first choice for Steve Jobs? Uh, I think they were looking at Christian Bale initially, and I think that would have... It was going to be Christian Bale as Steve Jobs and David Fincher, who also did The Social Network, as director. And that, that pairing seemed really interesting to me. Uh, I almost imagine Christian Bale in his American Psycho mode, uh, <laughs> which would have been a perfect way to do insane genius jobs, too. So do you think they're going to do the same? I mean, I guess in the social network, it was sort of more of a story about Facebook and social networking and how we relate to other people. And they sort of, right. you know, that was how it wasn't accurate. Do, do you think they've done the same thing here? I'm not sure what, I haven't seen the script or anything. I think it is floating around. But what we do know is the movie is going to, it's going to focus on three main product launches uh, that Jobs had to go through. And it's also going to tell uh, a deeper story. Like it's going to tell the story of his life through flashbacks as well. Um, so I'm not quite sure. I, I think Aaron Sorkin likes to paint broad strokes and he paints, he tries to take, uh, he has very epic ambitions for whatever he does. So I think you could take the story of Steve Jobs and turn it into a very interesting uh, portrayal of like an American genius. Um, of somebody who's flawed, which we do see them discuss in the uh, the trailer too. They talk about his uh, daughter, Lisa, um, but also somebody who's clearly changed the world. So I think that conflict uh, of somebody who can be kind of a monster at times and also a genius uh, is going to be really interesting. Yeah, I mean, they kind of told that story in Pirates of Silicon Valley. I think that was, which was a, a great movie. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't it a it's, miniseries? Wasn't it a TV, TV movie? It was a TV movie. Yeah. It's so cheesy. Um, it's so cheesy. It's, yeah. not, it's not a good movie, but I really enjoy watching it because it was also, it was all we had. That's kind of why I like The Social Network because it kind of elevated the technology story to something that was basically Oscar worthy. Um, and until then, pretty much all we had was Pirates of Silicon Valley. Right. I mean, which is so funny because it just shows how far we've come and, you know, how in the rear view, further in the rear view, we can see how important Steve Jobs was back then. He was just someone, you know, a niche kind of person that right, had an interesting right. story. I think that the guy who was in the ER played Steve Jobs yes. in that. I can't remember what his name is. Noah Wiley? No, Noah Wiley. So, <laughs> the other one. He, well, I get confused. You played Gates and Jobs. Yeah. I'm told Noah Wiley was. Okay. Play, played him. But um, <laughs> so now I was interested uh because Joanna Hoffman, uh, who is, is the, the woman that is in most of those scenes, uh, who is played by uh, a famous actress whose name is Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet. Yeah. <laughs> Getting help all over the place. Uh, <laughs> now, I mean, I read Walter Isaacson's Steve Job, Jobs book. I, um, you know, I know the story, but she was not a huge figure uh, that I remember. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know much about her? I mean, she's been a part of Apple for a long time. I think she recently left the company. Um, but she's kind of been in the background. She's been somebody who's really uh, worked really uh, well with reporters and kind of uh, helped juggle Apple's image. Uh, so one thing Aaron Sorkin was really criticized for in The Social Network was the really poor portrayal of women in that film uh, because that was really a guy's movie and the few women that were there were either like uh, girlfriends or trying to be manipulative or being used as like plot points. So I do think um, bringing in Joanna Hoffman and having a character, you know, having a female character that's prominent in the film should, uh, I don't know, should make it a lot more balanced for sure. I, I definitely think that. I, w I just wondered if they were playing um, her up a little bit, but I mean, she mm -hmm. probably, uh, it's quite possible that she just hasn't been written up much about because that's, you know, that's the way people write. They mostly write about the men. So, yes, yes, uh, but much. yeah, it was interesting to see. And I read a little bit about her and I'm, I'm, I am very interested. Another uh, thing that I'm interested in watching is you have a, a review of AMC's new show humans uh, about advanced androids. Uh, I think the show calls them synths. Synths. Synth, yeah. <laughs> just to make it difficult to pronounce. Uh, so you have a little advanced screener of this AMC show. Uh, what do you think so far? I really like it. Uh, it's a really, for me, what's interesting about it is it's a very intimate show. So it's not a, something that's trying to be super sci-fi. You don't see hyper technology everywhere. It's not like Blade Runner or something. Uh, it's pretty much set in an alternate present. So everything looks like today, except they happen to have these androids walking around who look very human and who are pretty intelligent. They're not like super artificially intelligent yet, but they can do common tasks. They can like clean your home. They can cook for you, um, which is, it's just really interesting to see that portrayal and see it being almost normal for this world. Uh, one of the characters, we see him go and buy a synth in one of the very first scenes, and it's like he's shopping for a smartphone. And I found that really, really interesting how normalized it was and seeing how 
smartphones are everywhere now and how we've just become mm -hmm. adapted to this crazy new technology. I wonder what it's going to take for us to, you know, be used to robots walking around and, you know, amongst us. Yeah, I and mean, the synth that you talk about that they go to buy is, is basically a nanny um, mm -hmm. supposed to uh, replace the mother bee. I mean, the mother is there, but she's busy working as mothers do these days. <laughs> and so the, the synth is supposed to, you know, do all the things a mother does without losing her temper or, you know, losing yeah. her patience, which uh, mm -hmm. that was very interesting to me. And and your point was that science, when science fiction is good, it shows what's happening in, in real life. And uh, that yeah. made me think I just saw a friend who has a live-in nanny and I was thought, oh, that must be really great. But then when I thought about it, that that must be really hard, like all of the kind yeah. of things to, to invite someone else to live in your house. So I thought that was really interesting. It sounds like a, a science fiction that's really um, going to show us about how we're living now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, that's just the way sci-fi has always worked. It's a really great way to uh, deal with themes that we're dealing with today or we're going to deal with tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the show is really good. And I've only seen two episodes so far, but it's not a very long season. I think it's like six or eight episodes. So yeah, I'm really interested in seeing where it's going. Uh, how does it compare to Battlestar Galactica? Oh, I love Battlestar Galactica. So it's very different. Like there's there's kind of an action a thriller element to it as well. There's a group of synths that are on the run from a shadowy government agency, um, I think because they're close to developing consciousness of their own. Uh, but Battlestar is just like, I, I really like Battlestar Galactica, and that's just like a great big sci-fi space opera with action and guns and everything and spaceships. Uh, that's not in the show. The show's very, very normal. Very, it's, it's, it's like a typical drama, except there are androids around. So that one that we just saw, I don't know if you saw the black hair and the green eyes, she's the nanny synth? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I would not want her living in my house. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> well, it's also, it, it brings up a really interesting point, too, of like, maybe we shouldn't create these hyper-attractive androids that go everywhere that are in our homes, because that just, that creates all these human problems, too. But that's, I, I think that's what the show is showing us, like, uh, at, no matter what technology we're using or how advanced everything gets at the core of all of our problems it's going to be very human things right yeah i mean i i like that my husband is not really a fan of using siri or the amazon echo right. um right. you know because then i know you like echo yeah <laughs> i like i like echo he doesn't like it which is fine then you know <laughs> i don't i don't need alexa you know taking my spot in the house you know <laughs> So let's move on to Apple Music. Uh, what are your thoughts so far? It was just released yesterday, so we've had a little over 24 hours to, to play with it. What do you think? Oh, I like it. It's, uh, I mean, I'm a heavy Spotify user, um, so I don't, it's not going to replace Spotify for me. Uh, I have so many playlists there, and I just, that's kind of embedded in my life. But Apple Music, it's good enough, and that's kind of the key for Apple, right? Because Spotify has, I think, around 15 million subscribers now and a decent chunk of free users. Um, but they're not quite mainstream, and neither is RDO. Um, so if Apple offers something that's just there when you turn on your iPhone, uh, that's going to give Apple a big advantage over everyone else. And it is really funny how easy it is to sign up for this, too. It's the same price, but that ease of use and the fact that it's good enough, uh, I think it's going to be huge for Apple. Yeah, I mean, and uh, you. So it sounds like you might not use it regularly, and and you also say mm -hmm. it's so easy to sign up. You might accidentally sign up for it and not know that it's going to automatically charge you. So you posted uh, a story about just how easy it is actually to, to tell Apple not to charge you after the free yeah. month trial. How do you? How do you? Do, what do you do to to do that? Well, you could do it two ways. Um, from from an iPhone, you can actually click the top left icon. Uh, in the Apple Music app and go to your iTunes account settings. And from there, you can just, there's an option to manage your subscriptions. If you click that, there's one called Your Membership, and that refers to your Apple Music membership. You could just untick Auto Renewal. Uh, it's a checkbox at the bottom of that. And it's pretty much the same process on uh, iTunes, on the Mac, or Windows as well. And that's something you could have done for a while, but I don't think there's been a service like this that's been so widely promoted and something that people could so easily sign up for. Uh, so it's important to know that you can turn off this automatic pay uh, payment if you need to, and you can still use it for the first three months because Apple's offering this free trial to everyone. Yeah, I found when I had Beats, it, was, uh, it wasn't hard. They didn't automatically sign me up um, after right. the free trial, whereas Google Play Music does, um, which, yes. you know, I mean, that, it's, it's fair to do that. That's why they give you the trial because, you know, mm -hmm. they're hoping some people will just be too lazy or not know, you know, that, that, it's, that their credit card is being charged and 
that's how they get a customer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's certainly not the most like uh, honest way of getting a customer, I'd say. Um, and I haven't seen the Google Music me uh, method either. So I don't know if it's as easy as it is for Apple Music. But I do wonder if Apple may get in trouble at some point for having this sort of like huge uh, advantage over the rest of the competition. You know, Microsoft got in a lot of trouble for bundling in Internet Explorer uh, in the 90s, you know, and all the other browsers had trouble getting uh, getting aboard or getting adopted. And my Microsoft got into trouble for that. So I wonder if we'll see something similar on Apple. Well, I'm sure someone will try to get them in trouble. Mm -hmm, for sure. <laughs> and hopefully their lawyers have already thought of that before we did. Yeah. Well, Devendra, thank you so much. Devendra Hardwar from Engadget, senior editor. Uh, you can see his work there or at Devendra on Twitter. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Take Always care. fun. All right. Take Bye. care. Coming up, Netflix gets taxed in Chicago and Microsoft wants Minecraft in more classrooms. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Braintree, code for easy online payments. If you're a mobile app developer, check out Braintree. It's a payment solution used by companies like Uber, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, and Munchery. Braintree has made the payment experience in these apps seamless and magical, and now you can add a similar experience to your own app. With excellent customer service and simple integration, Braintree gets you ready to receive payments quickly. And Braintree's continuous support plus fast payouts means you'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth. Braintree is helping solve the problem of mobile cart abandonment by offering a best-in-class mobile checkout experience. You can check it out for yourself. Braintree gives you a full-stack payment solution, support for all payment types your customers might want. So start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more, all with a single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, and fast payouts. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash technight. And we thank Braintree for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. First, a story request from our audience. Steve from Chicago tweeted the news that a new cloud tax has struck fear in the hearts of Netflix-loving Chicagoans. The Verge reports that an aggressive new 9% tax law goes into effect in the city today. The local tax is aimed at popular streaming platforms like Netflix and Spotify, as well as remote databases like Amazon Web Services or Microsoft's Azure. The tax is technically to be, lev is technically to be lev levied on consumers, but a representative from Netflix says the company is already trying to figure out a way to add the tax to their customer's bill. Lawyers are arguing that these kinds of taxes go against the Federal Communications Act and the Internet Tax Freedom Act, but for now, the laws are in effect in Chicago. Recode reports that just like Jen and Ben before them, Hewlett and Packard are officially splitting into two companies, sadly not to be called Hewlett and Packard. In a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the company said they remain on track to complete the separation on November 1st. Google released their self-driving car report for June today, and as you probably could have guessed, it has proven once again that humans are bad at driving and robots are good. Go team robot cars. Autonomous vehicles were involved in two accidents in June, and both accidents involved a human driver failing to stop on time and rear-ending the autonomous car. In one instance, the human driver also failed to read the stoplight and yield the right-of-way correctly. And finally, Tech Times reports that Microsoft is creating a home on the web to help educators use Minecraft in the classroom. Education.minecraft.net recognizes that classrooms all over, all over the world already use Minecraft, especially classrooms where teachers listen to their students and are inspired by their own passion for the game. Microsoft worked with early Minecraft in the classroom adopters to create a space where teachers can share lesson plans, ask questions, and use Minecraft to help kids learn math, history, communication, and to change the way they learn. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 or go subscribe with the podcast app on your phone or on iTunes. And as long as you're at iTunes, leave us a review. You can also write to us at TN2 at twit.tv or tweet me a story like Steve from Chicago did today or like Virgil does every day. Thank you, Virgil. And of course, you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.